Hello everyone, welcome to another introductory Zardis Neo video. Uh, today we'll be going to EDA once again, and this time doing some variography. So from the EDA window, I load my data table, and this will all be about making experimental variograms. So I click drag iron, which is the variable I want to study, into variogram. I'm going to turn on automatic apply because this is a small enough data set that I'm happy for the calculation to be uh, redone every time I change a parameter. So what do we see? Uh, we start by default with an omnidirectional variogram. So this is just uh, no directionality involved. It's just pairs of points separated by some given distance. We have the parameters uh, for the omnidirectional variogram here, the lag value, maximum distance. Um, if you want to have a shorter lag value for the first few lags, you can choose to refine uh, some number of lags and a tolerance. Uh, there's an option to calculate the variogram cloud, which is uh, all showing a representation of the variability of all pairs of samples. I won't go into that. Um, in these videos. Uh, context. This one is just a raw variogram. If you're doing a Gaussian transform, you've got various other options. Do you want the Gaussian variogram? Do you want the raw and the Gaussian variogram? Uh, in a future video, we'll get into more details there. You also choose between ordinary Krieging and simple Krieging um, at this step, although that can be uh, changed later on. Now, the modeling of the variogram is done at the same time as the experimental calculation, uh, but just for uh, explanatory purposes, I'll turn off the model fitting uh, currently, uh, and so we'll just focus on, the, uh, on how the changing the parameters changes the experimental curve. Uh, but in a real application, you're probably keeping the model fitting on, and certainly um, the end goal of this task is to save the variogram model. Okay, so the omnidirectional variogram model, oh sorry, omnidirectional experimental variogram, probably not what you're going to use. You're going to be doing something uh, multidirectional. And let's make a 3D view. And I'll turn on the rotation manipulator. Um, so this allows me to uh, set, if I click on the picker icon, um, I can sort of set a rotation uh, according to uh, what I see in the like, main orientation of, of mineralization in the ore body. Um, to simplify things, I'm just going to turn that off and reset to just north, south, east, west vertical directions. There's also a variogram map uh, procedure with which you could uh, choose uh, preferred orientations. Now in the multi-directional calculation, I'll go to the advanced uh, direction definitions, advanced direction definitions button pops up a new window and um, number of regular directions two. So that's two directions in uh, the horizontal plane because I don't have a rotation that's dipping plus a vertical direction. And I can change the lag, maximum distance, tolerances, angular tolerances, slicing heights, etc. Um, on each direction individually or I can select uh, two columns. Let's say I want uh, to try 100 meters as a lag, and that'll adjust both of them. I don't want to calculate all the way to 2000, maybe just to 1500. And I think, oh, maybe the uh, 100 meters is too short. My experimental curves are a little bit too jagged and irregular. Let's try 150, and that's that seems much smoother. My vertical direction, these are 15 meter composites, so let's make it. 15 meter lags. You can change various other parameters um, 
as you like. You can decrease the tolerance or increase the tolerance as needed. And once you have a set of curves that uh, you think is reasonable um, and you'd like to fit a model to them, turn on the model fitting. That'll be the subject of the next video.